You know what's really funny about the Linux community? There is a lot of controversial information out there, since seemingly everyone seems to have a different experience. Especially when it comes to the whole, if you want a smooth experience, then go for AMD debacle. Generally speaking, AMD GPUs perform way better on Linux than Nvidia's. Oh wait, actually it seems like it's the other way around. Oh hold on a second, no, performance wise AMD beats Nvidia. And then again, it doesn't. Yeah, but the out of the box experience is better. Until you need some hardware accelerated programs. In short, it's a mess. And being someone who has intensively used both Nvidia and AMD, I want to share my personal experiences. What worked well, what didn't, and ultimately, does it even matter? But before we dig in, let me quickly remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like. And if you're here at least a second time, then you should also subscribe to the channel for more Linux content just like this. So how did the whole which graphics card is better fiasco even start? Well, to answer that, we just need to take a look at how each company treats Linux. Or more precisely, the Linux desktop. AMD is way more open when it comes to sharing code, which is being used to develop open source drivers, durable refresh rate support and so on. Nvidia, on the other hand, being the market leader and all that, don't really contribute anything. Their solutions are solely proprietary and if someone breaks it unexpectedly, then of course people get mad because they essentially cannot do anything about it. This whole closed source philosophy also leads to some problems when it comes to standards. Wayland, a newer display protocol which allows Linux to talk to each monitor separately, is missing a lot of features that Nvidia needs. An open cooperation would definitely be beneficial in that regard. But that being said, closed source versus open source is something that is often blown way out of proportion on Linux. While it's true that Nvidia's practices are not ideal, AMD does pull off a lot of similar stunts. But it isn't considered as bad because they do provide some functionality. A prime example of this would be the Advanced Media Framework Hardware Encoder, short AMF, which is essentially the counterpart of Nvidia's NVENC. And guess what? It's only included in the proprietary AMD Pro drivers. What I'm going for is that while yes, AMD does provide a heckin' lot more to open source than Nvidia does, unfortunately the actual experience doesn't always live up to expectations. AMD has the advantage that its GPUs are supported by Mesa, a graphics library which also functions as a driver and it basically comes on all Linux distributions by default. For Nvidia GPUs, if you want to do anything besides maybe browsing the web, you definitely need to install their proprietary driver. Most distros package it in their repository and you can download and install it quickly with your package manager. But beware, not every distro has packaged it with all of its functionalities. On Fedora for example, CUDA is missing and you need to install another package. When it comes to comparing the actual experience between the drivers, then Nvidia users should be happy to hear that in contrast to AMD and Mesa, they get access to a control panel which, to be honest, is outdated by at least 15 years. This control panel and especially features like FreeSync, G-Sync and some OpenGL settings can only be adjusted if you use Xorg and the X11 protocol as your display server. This protocol is older than Wayland, generally less optimized and has pretty bad multi-monitor support. However, it's also the protocol that has been around the longest and still offers way more functionality than its newer counterpart does. On the internet, whenever someone complains about Wayland, very often it gets blamed on Nvidia. However, when we compare the actual experience, then it's essentially identical to the experience on AMD. For a long time, the Wayland protocol only supported synced images, which got achieved by either using vSync or to rely on variable refresh rates like FreeSync and Adaptive Sync if the desktop environment's compositor supports it. 
And while it's true that Nvidia does not support variable refresh rates on Wayland at the moment, this fundamental problem that has existed for years wasn't in fact Nvidia's fault. But it is now. Performance-wise, both GPU vendors basically perform identical. Mesa's development pacing is of course faster than Nvidia's and especially gamers profit from optimizations earlier than Nvidia users. That being said, the differences are not something that a typical non-competitive gamer would even realize. What I did notice in the past was that the Nvidia driver tends to break more frequently after an update than Mesa, which essentially doesn't at all. Where Nvidia really shines though is software support. DaVinci Resolve, Blender and essentially every other application that allows for both CUDA and OpenCL support runs way better on Nvidia hardware. While AMD GPUs technically support OpenCL as well, getting it to run properly is a real pain. From missing functionalities in Mesa versions to installing the proprietary driver that is only available to a select amount of distributions to trying out random solutions on the internet. Hardware acceleration on programs that rely on OpenCL is really difficult to set up on AMD. It's actually the reason on why I recommend Fedora or at least a Fedora container whenever you need a program that relies on OpenCL hardware acceleration. Since Fedora has a package called ROCM OpenCL available in the repository. And even if you manage to get programs running, sometimes even they themselves punish you for using an AMD GPU. DaVinci Resolve on Linux, for example, does not support the H.264 codec out of the box like on Windows due to licensing cost issues. If you buy the studio version, however, then you do get support for encoding and decoding in H.264, but only on Nvidia GPUs. On AMD, H.264 works, but only with slower software decoding and the encoding options are straight up not available at all. To be honest, that is a pretty bold move from Blackmagic, since what's preventing me to encode with software? Nothing. Whatever, the thing is, that's the current situation. And if you need a program like that and you don't have a PC that is as beefy as mine, then you might actually be bound to use an Nvidia GPU. And honestly, there's no shame in that. I used an Nvidia GPU on Linux for about a year before I switched to AMD. And besides the lack of freezing support on Wayland, the overall experience was the same. It even saved me time back then that I wasted on getting OpenCL to run on other distributions besides Fedora. While the proprietary Nvidia driver is of course also not flawless, especially if you use secure boot and the signing of the driver goes wrong for some reason, once you manage to install it, it basically just works. The reason on why I'm making this video is to reassure you that you don't need to be afraid to buy Nvidia hardware on Linux. If you need it or find a really good deal online, then you can just buy it. Sure, with AMD you would be supporting their open source contributions as well. But hey, even Nvidia started to open source some stuff I guess. But if you don't need power applications, AMD is the better choice for you. Because it's essentially plug the card in, boot your PC and you're good to go. No driver installation, no signing shenanigans, just go. And that's the beauty of open source. Though I still wish that AMD would ship their AMP encoder and proper OpenCL support. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like. And if you're still here, then why don't you also subscribe to the channel as well? While I'm going to prepare the next video, why don't you watch this one in the meantime? And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.